for alarm and this is my Simplex 2001. I'm going to make a video today that's a little bit different from normal. This is going to be what I call an in and out video. Basically I'll be demonstrating the 2001, what it is, and some history behind it, how it works, and then I'll be giving it a rating for collector friendliness. First of all, I'm going to do a little demonstration of how it works, and then I'll explain some things about it. So, as you can see, here's the panel, and you look inside, you got all the cards and everything. So, let's put in, let's put into alarm. Let's see, I'll do the 2903 and the 4251. And reset. So that's pretty much the basics of operating the 2001. It's extremely simple, but truthfully, on a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being a very easy panel such as the Firelight MS2 and 5 being a high-end addressable panel, basically a scale of difficulty, I would give this panel about a 4 or a 5 in terms of difficulty and collector friendliness because these panels, even though they look pretty simple, they're a major, major pain in the neck if you don't know what you're doing. And even if you do know what you're doing, they're quite difficult. So, now I will switch to the other camera and explain why. Alright, now I'm on the other camera. So, let me just zoom in a little. You can see different things going on in there. You can see all the cards. Like, we got the system control card here, which basically just controls everything about the system. You got your knowledge, you got your reset, your lamp test, and different indicators for different troubles, like enunciated trouble, system trouble, and ground fault trouble. You also got the piezo, which is ridiculously loud. It doesn't need to be that loud. So I made a little earplug-like thing out of electrical tape and I jammed it in there. It's, like, unnecessarily loud. And you got your zones right here. Now, these are zones with test switches. Normally, the zones wouldn't have them, but these, these do. So you flip it normal, or you can disable the zone, which puts panel in trouble, or you can flip it all the way up, and you get activation. <laughs> Like that. I'll turn that signal off. Anyway. Then you got your march time card here, which basically pulses the signal cards, and this is a signal card. I have a blank here, and I'll explain why, because of how I wired up this panel. And then I got a relay card here, and an empty slot. So, now for a few more things. Let me just get these out of here. These are spare cards that I have. Let me just get those out of the way. And then... And start taking the thing apart a little bit. And I'll show you why this panel is so collector unfriendly. There, now the power's off. And it makes that weird whining. So, first of all, one thing that you need to know about the 2001 panels is even though it is a card based system, unlike the more modern card based panels, such as the, the Notifier System 5000 or like the Simplex 4005, or like even even more modern card-based panels, which there are very few left now. Unlike those, you cannot interchange the cards on this panel. Like, I couldn't take the signal card, which is here, and move it over here to one of the, in place of one of the zone cards. You can't do it, it doesn't work. And, in the process, you may fry the system, so it's really not a good idea to do that. The blank modules don't really stay in very well. Like, this one's taped, I think. Yeah, that one's taped, so I'll just leave it alone. So Now, nev now on a card-based system, you should never pull cards while the panel has power. That's why I shut down the power. However, on the 2001, it is possible to cheat, where if you hold down the reset button while you are pulling out a card, or inserting a card, it won't damage it. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pull these cards out one by one. There's the system control card, also, hello. <laughs> the 
zone one card. Zone two, three, four. Zone one, zone two is three to four are pulled. March time card. Signal circuit card. Relay card. And I'm going to leave the blank in there since it's taped in and stuff. So, does my face keep getting in the video? Probably. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, that's I pull the cards out now. Now we've got what's here, and I call it the card frame, which is basically a little thing that holds all the cards in place. So now, time to take that out to get inside the back of the panel. And then I'll, be, then I'll begin to show you why these things are not collector friendly. Why I rate them as being so difficult. So now I've got the card support frame out, and you can see the inside of the panel with my rather neat wiring job. So I'll unplug the battery harness just to get it out of the way. All right, now here's the inside of the 2001. I've put in a, I've clipped on a small electric light with an LED bulb so that you can see inside more clearly of what's going on. So basically, how the 2001 works is this little thing at the top right here of the circuit board is the power supply. You got your filter capacitor. Transformer input, AC power input, fuse, main fuse, and regulator circuit for the DC voltage, 24 volt DC output. And then you've got your cards right here. There's eight cards in the single bay 2001, and those are the slots for them. Now, one thing though is the main control card has to be the very first card. I mean, you could put any card you want there, but it won't work unless the main control card is the first card. So, a little bit of design limitation. So now you will notice, also, there are numbered holes with jumper wires going between them, as you can see, like right there, right there. All these jumper wires go to the different card slots, and they all have different functions. Basically how the 2001 works in that sense is that you have jumper wires that connect to each card to different, to different things. Now, on a simple 2001 system, you would have some jumpers which go from the NAT card, which would go in this slot right here on my panel, to the system control card's 24 volt output when the panel is in alarm, and that's what sets off the NAT card. However, on my panel, I have that running through the March time card and then to the NAC card, so that the March time card can control the NACs. Control one of the NACs. The other NAC is controlled by the 24 volt out in alarm, so that it it's also controlled by the NAC card, but is set up so that it stays on, that NAC stays on when the panel is silenced, while the other one cuts off when the panel is silenced. So, that's one thing that makes these difficult, is all these jumper wires, because normally these come soldered down, and if you don't know what order the cards are in, it's gonna, you're going to be spending hours to figure out what order the cards were supposed to be in. Fortunately, on my panel, they forgot to solder the jumpers, so I can actually pull these out and change them around if I wanted to. So, I got kind of lucky there. So, <laughs> Anyway, though, so another thing that makes them more difficult is the terminal blocks. Let me just move these wires out of the way. You notice how the terminal blocks are numbered 1 through 24, and then 25, and then 1 through 24 again. Could be like 25 through 48 as well, but there's two terminal blocks. Basically, how this works is each card slot gets six terminals. So the first six are for card 1, next six are for card 2, card 3, and card 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ETC. You get the idea. So. And that's another thing that makes it difficult, is because they're numbered, you don't know exactly what they do. So you have to figure it out with the paperwork and draw yourself a diagram and hang on to that diagram. So, when I got this panel, it was in pieces. I didn't know how it was wired. The jumper wires were, like, squirrely. And I spent almost six hours, nearly six hours, a few days before Christmas a couple of years ago, figuring out exactly how to wire this thing, how to make this thing work. And I eventually got it working that night, and that was pretty cool in the end. So, but it took me a long time. So, other than that, as you can see, I got the zones wired here. But the fortunate part with the terminal blocks is that the terminals actually go in a pattern depending on the cards you have. I'm, I'm moving the light so you can see underneath better. So as you can see, the second slot holds the Zone 1 card. 7 and 8 are for Zone 1, 9 and 10 are for Zone 2, 13 and 14 are for Zone 3, and 15 and 16 are for Zone 4. So they go in a pattern, like, on the dual Zone cards, the first four terminals are for the Zones. And then the last two are actually enunciator outputs. 
So like, if you had an enunciator for the system, that's what would be wired. Because on these older types of systems, the enunciators, you'd have to have a wire for every single light on the enunciator. So if you had a six zone system and you wanted to have an enunciator show all six zones, you would need six wires for each light. You would need a wire for the trouble light and you would need two wires for the silence and reset switches, and then you would need two common wires, one plus, one minus. So that is six wires for the zones, two wires for the switches, that's eight wires, one wire for the trouble light, that's nine, and then the two common wires, that's eleven. So you would need eleven wires to go from the panel to the enunciator in order to do that. Nowadays, enunciators are digital, you only need four wires, sometimes six sometimes six depending on the brand and actually one brand even has two wire not satyrs but I heard of that I don't remember which brand it is though <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why this panel is so difficult to work on first I'm gonna go over each card one at a time and show a few things about them and give a little demonstration of reassembling it and getting it working and a couple demonstrations of the quirks of these panels and how they work so basically you got your system control card, such as this one right here, and you got your controls on it. And basically, what happens is you got three relays here and a whole bunch of logic circuits. You got you got the main control relay, which is one of these. Now, what happens when the panel goes into alarm is the relay clicks on and applies power to a bus inside of the panel, and that bus applies power to the cards, the NAT cards, and they start sounding. It also applies power to the march time card, and that starts sounding. And then you got your zone cards, like these. Now this one has a horizontal light one, but they also have one where the lights are arranged vertically. I don't know why they have to have two, but they do for some reason. This one's got the enable disable and the test switches, of course, and the connector on the end. Now there's a small logic circuit in here made of some ICs. There's no there's no microcontrollers at all in this panel. It's all based on solid state logic and some relays. So there's a circuit inside this panel which measures the zone and detects a dead short or an open condition. When it detects an open condition, it causes a trouble, and when it detects a dead short, it causes an alarm. Now, how these panels do that is actually kind of neat. There are some circuits which run through the entire panel and connect to all of the cards. There's one circuit, which is I call it the alarm circuit, where if a zone goes into alarm, it applies power to a contact, which puts the panel into alarm. It sends power to the main control card, which puts that into alarm and then the main control card does its thing. There's also the trouble circuit inside of the panel where each card has a trouble output and it works kind of like an AND gate. All the cards that are in trouble put voltage onto the trouble circuit and that puts the panel, that puts the main control card into trouble, sounds the piezo. Now, when no more cards are putting power into the trouble circuit, the trouble circuit goes dead and the panel goes back to normal. So, that makes perfect sense right there. And lastly, there is the acknowledge circuit. The next one is there's the acknowledge circuit inside the panel, where when you press the acknowledge button, it sends out some voltage, which causes all cards that have been alarmed and not acknowledged to stop, to stop putting power onto the alarm circuit. That way, another card can trip the panel back into alarm. It also turns on a small gate inside, which basically isolates the card from the blink circuit. Now the main control panel has a small, the main control card has a timer IC in it somewhere. I don't know where it is specifically, but there is a timer inside which basically sends out a constant blink, a constant pulsing pattern. That's what makes the LEDs in the panel blink. So one of these pins is the blink input and that's what makes the lights blink. That's why they all blink perfectly in sync. And when you acknowledge it, it applies power which turns on a, a latching circuit inside the zone card, which causes the LED to stop blinking, which is rather cool. And the next card, the LED would blink, it would go solid, and so on. So that's how the zone card works and some of the control circuits inside the panel that go between all the cards. How the march time card works is you basically got a timer IC in here, which times at a certain rate, and the March Time card includes an extra feature that the zone cards don't have, where the panel has the panel's main control card has two alarm outputs on it. One of them is constant, and one of them is on until the panel is reset. So, well, there's three outputs. There's a constant 24 volts which powers all the cards. There's the 
on until silenced output, and there's the on until reset output. So one of these pins listens to the on until silenced output, and when the panel is alarmed, it pulses at march time. And when the panel is silenced, that line inside the panel between all the cards goes dead. And the march time card switches to a pulsing every so often instead of pulsing constantly. Now that line is configured by jumpers. It's not built into the circuit board, which means that if you don't connect that jumper, the horn neck will pulse at a slow rate instead of the full march time rate. So instead of hearing, uh, 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 you would actually hear, uh, uh, like that. So that's not ideal, but sometimes they've done that on these systems. I don't know why, but that's basically how this works. Now this card is constantly powered by the panel. That's why you notice the green light blinks when the panel is normal. It's constantly powered. It's not, it's not powered when it's in alarm. So now, for the signal circuit card. The signal circuit card in itself is relatively simple. There's a circuit inside which measures the voltage, which puts voltage onto the circuit. 24 volts gets put out onto the circuit, but the polarity is backwards so that the alarms, which are diode polarized, won't sound. Now, if it detects a short, or if it detects an open from missing the resistor, or a ground fault or something, it'll put power onto the trouble circuit inside the panel and put the panel in trouble. So, now the way these things, now the way the signal circuit cards work is that some of these terminals, uh, they're, they might be on the other side, I don't remember which side, but that's a bit too specific for this description. But anyway, some of these terminals are what's called the pick terminals, like the manual calls them pick, picking, but I'll just call them activating. Basically when you apply power to the terminal, it activates that particular NAC. So like if you apply power to one of the terminals to turn on the relay for NAC 1, you apply power to the other terminal to turn on the relay for NAC 2. In the way my system is wired, the march time card's output is connected to NAC 1 and NAC 2, so that as the march time card pulses, it turns these relays on and off. And then of course you got your common power, of course. So and the and the blink circuit input. Now what makes these a little different from the zone cards though is when you acknowledge the panel, the trouble lights continue to blink. They don't stop blinking when you acknowledge, unlike the zone cards. So, it's a little bit different. Yeah, the NAC card's relatively simple. You got fuses here, and the fuses are great for testing because you can pull out the fuse and it disables the NAC if you want to do a silent test. So, they're useful for that as well. And lastly, the simplest of all the cards is the relay card which is basically just two relays wired to some of these terminals, and these these connectors here would lead to terminals on the terminal block, and then you've just got your pick connectors, which you just put jumper wires inside the panel to control when you want the relays to turn it on and off, so that's relatively simple. Other cards I've got here is the fairly complicated coder card, which does a coded signaling pattern. And I'm not 100% sure how these things work, but it is all based on logic. There's no microcontrollers at all. These switches control how control what the pulsing pattern is. And there is a timer in here, which only allows it to run four times. So, these were, this card wires similar. This card goes in the panel and is set up similar to the March Time card, but it's not exactly the same. And I actually have wired up my panel so that it can control the NACs it can pulse the NAX instead of the March Time card. And the way I've wired the panel, I've actually made it so you can have both the March Time card and the, and the coder card in at the same time, which causes the panel to do some rather screwy things, so I won't really demonstrate it. But it doesn't damage the panel, it just does something rather funny to the NAX. You know what, I'll demonstrate it, what the heck. So, that's the coder card. And I've got extra cards here, like i got a... I have another one of those twin NAC cards, but I also have a single NAC card right here. Basically, it's only a one relay instead of two relays. And that's really it. So, that's it for all the cards. So now I'm going to go back to the panel, and I'm going to start reassembling it, and you can see how it works in the process. Alright, so now we're back to the panel. I'm going to start reassembling it, and you'll be able to see a few things about how that works. But first, I just want to point out a couple more things in with the inside of the panel. So, I'm going to go handheld for that. Up here in the corner is the alarm relay, and there's a terminal block here for the relay output, and there's also a constant 24 volt output here. Normally, this panel does not support four wire smoke detectors. You would actually have to add a 
a special card to that to be able to do it. And basically one way you could do that is you wire the relay through the constant power. Wire a relay through the constant power, the relay drops out when you reset the panel. But that's because the output up here is constant 24 volt power output. This connector right here, which has four pins, is for the battery. Now, the funny thing is, though, this is what the connector looks like. Here's all the cards. This is what the connector looks like. It's got two wires for the battery, then there's a loop wire, which, if this connector is pulled out, it puts the panel into trouble. However, this panel does not, this panel does not supervise the batteries at all. Like, it will not have a battery trouble if the batteries were to die. So. Yeah, it's a bit of a design flaw because a lot of 80s panels from the same era were capable of doing that, but this one isn't. So, what the heck, Simplex? <laughs> anyway, so, you notice one thing, that there's a very large hole for the capacitor, but the actual capacitor is very small. That's because I replaced it. As you can see, it's soldered there, and it was not focused. It's soldered there and soldered there. It's because I replaced it. And then these diodes are the voltage regulator. Or not the voltage regulator, but the rectifier. Changes AC to DC. This thing here with the heat sink is the regulator. So now I'll go in I'll go back to assembling the cards. So first of all, I need that card bus frame, which is on the floor. This needs to go in. Now, it is possible to load up the bus it is possible to load up the card holder frame and put all the cards, put all the cards in it, and then put it into the panel, but it is a major pain in the neck to do it that way, and it's not recommended because if you don't do it right, you could break one or more of the cards accidentally. So it's just easier to have all the cards out, and then you put the bus panel or the card holder panel in that way. So let me just go ahead and put this in. And now I can start installing the cards. So I'll start with the obvious one. I'll start with the system control card. So basically just put it in, line it up with the connector, and just like that. In the zone one, zone two card. Zone three, zone four card. The March time card, not the signal circuit card, the March time card. And skip this one because the coder card goes there and, you, and I explained earlier. The NAC card. The relay card. And then there is no eighth card. So, yeah. Now, I'll power the panel. There we go. Panel's got power now. And the march time right light is blinking, so I'll turn this light off now. Now that the panel has been reassembled, I'll give a demonstration of how it works. And I'll give a more in-depth explanation. So, remember the trouble circuit I mentioned earlier. Let me just put something into trouble. Like I'll pull off the smoke detector head, which puts zone 4 into trouble. So basically, it applied power to the trouble circuit, which turned on the trouble light, caused this light to blink, and sounds the piezo, which is very loud, but I have it muted, of course. So you flip the silence switch up, it's toggle switch, you flip that up, and it silences. If you put anything else in trouble, like if I were to put NAC2 into trouble, it would also apply power to the circuit. And like I said, once all the troubles have been fixed, like let me just put this head back up, it goes normal. Now you notice here, when it goes out of trouble, the, sound, the piezo sounds again, you have to flip the switch back down. These are called resound panels, and a lot of older panels were like this. The reason why they do that is because it's simpler to do it that way than to have to build up some extra circuit for an acknowledge switch, and then have that unacknowledge, and then acknowledge, and then unacknowledge, and it just become messy after a while. So they use a toggle switch, just like that. Resetting the panel causes a trouble as well. See? Because it drops power to the system. So that's basically how the trouble circuit works. And as you saw what I mentioned about the blink circuit, you know, I saw all those are blinking at the same rate, and then you acknowledge, actually, let me cut these off. You acknowledge, they stop blinking, and then 
I put those in trouble again, acknowledge they stopped blinking. So, basically that. So now let me put it into alarm and go from there. I'll trip it with a pulse station instead of one of the test switches. As you can see, it goes instantly because it's really logic. There's no delay time or anything. It pretty much just goes instantly into alarm. So now the alarm light is flashing and I can acknowledge it, which silences the panel so I actually turn back on. The alarm light's flashing. March time card has power on its fast pulse input and it is pulsing the two NACs right now. As you can see, the trouble lights on the NAC card flicker when they're being pulsed. On the older panels, actually, the trouble lights would turn on and off instead of just flickering. And that's how you knew they were being pulsed, but on these ones, they just flicker. And as you can see, they don't always flicker. Like, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. So, now, I'll acknowledge it. And, as you can see, it's pulsing slower now. And the way I've wired this panel, Signal circuit number two is the only one that gets pulsed when it's been acknowledged. See that? So now I'll do a reset, and it's normal again. As you can see, the trouble lights blinked when I released the reset. See that? Just like that. So now, let me demonstrate one little quirk that I found with this panel. So let me put it into alarm again. And this time, I am going to acknowledge it and I'm going to leave the pulse station activated. So, now you can't see it in the video, but the pulse station is activated right now. So if I were to do a reset, it would just, it blinks like this. It blinks, but it doesn't go back into alarm. It's really weird. I guess it's just like a, I guess they made a, they may have done that on purpose as a warning, like, whoops, you forgot to reset the zone without causing the signals to sound again. See, just a warning, just like that. But sometimes, though, when you do it, it goes back into alarm, because... Relay logic. See? Okay, that's a new one! That's never happened before. You see that? That is weird. That's why you say you have... That's why it says to hold the reset button for three seconds, because if you gently tap the reset switch, it somehow put the other... It somehow put zone two into alarm, even though zone two is normal. So that is a strange quirk right there. So let me reset the pulse station. You can actually acknowledge that. So now that zone is stuck in alarm. So activating it will not do anything. So reset. Like I said, it's all relay logic. Or solid state logic, partially. But that's it. So now I'll activate that again. And acknowledge. And it's in alarm. And reset. And that's pretty much normal behavior. So, now let me demonstrate what happens if you have the March Time card and the Coder card in the panel at the same time. The way I've wired the system, it behaves kind of funny. It's quite silly. So, I'll pull the NAC1 fuse out, and I will demonstrate this with the handheld camera so that you can see the signals being coded. All right, here goes. See how it acts erratically? That's because the March Time card and the Coder card are both applying power to the NAC relays at the same time. And that's why they're doing that. And don't worry, this is not damaging the panel. There's actually diodes that prevent power from backflowing into the cards. All the cards have diodes on them for that reason. It's a very robust panel, which is actually quite cool. Anyway, so let me pull out the March Time card now. It's tricky to do with one hand. And I'll demonstrate the coder card operating by itself. So let me just put that March Time card down. And here goes. Now when the coder card is finished, it'll go four times. When it is finished, this light comes on to tell you, but it takes a while, so I'm not gonna wait for that. So let me just reset. There we go. Now, whoop, I didn't. There we go. So now I'm going to pull the coder card out and change the little dip switch on it, which puts it into high speed mode. However, I can't do this with two hands because of how far away it is from the reset button. So I'm going to have to put the camera down for a moment. So hold on. Okay, 
now I got the card out, and I'll just flip the very last dip switch here, which puts it into hyper mode, and then put it back into the panel so I can put the camera down again. Alright, so now the coder card is in, it's in hyper mode. So basically what hyper mode does is it doubles the amount of pulses that it takes, meaning that instead of doing four 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 four, it's actually going to do eight 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 or something like that. So it's gonna get a little crazy. So here we go. Looks like I actually made it do ten eight eight eight. I'm not sure what the high speed mode is was meant to be for. Maybe if you had to do a really long string of pulses or something. But it has that, so weird. Listen, that really go. And there, coding completed light is on, so reset. Oop, flip the switch. There. So, that's it for the coding module. So, now back to the fixed camera. And while I'm holding the reset, I am going to put the March time card back and take the coder card out. Now, like I said, whoa! Like I said, the reason why this works, why you can do this, is because when you hold the reset switch, it kills the power completely to all of the cards. So, march time in, coder art, out, and power's back now. And let me just put this fuse back. Perfect. Now, just gonna finish reassembly of the panel. And I won't do that on video because it's kind of boring, but... Essentially, whoop, that's not gonna stay in, but essentially that is pretty much all I need to show about the 2001. Now, like I said, to rate this panel on a scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being very difficult, I would give this about a 5. Because, like I said, if you don't know how the cards were put in the panel, you have to figure it out yourself. If you don't have all the cards, it becomes difficult. If you don't know what the terminal blocks, what the terminals on the terminal blocks do, you're going to be spending hours looking through the very little available paperwork on these things. And it's just a pain in the neck. These panels are extremely difficult panels. They are not collector friendly at all. So that's it for the in and out of the Simplex 2001. And people who sat through this whole video, you can have a cake. But I'm not going to buy it. You'll have to buy it yourself.